Welcome to the Nuclear Snail Channel. In this episode I will talk about one of the most important topics in post-apocalyptic crafting, which is repurposing. Now repurposing is not something exclusive to the post-apocalyptic genre and I will talk a bit about that as well. But repurposing is something that is found in almost any good post-apocalyptic or dystopian work. And in fact its reach stretches far beyond just that. Repurposing is rooted in some basic primal animal instincts that we have as humans and as recipients of art. And it is um, made even more powerful by that. I will talk about how, why, when to use repurposing. I will show you a bunch of examples both from my own works and from the works of those people who have submitted their works in the Nuclear Snail community group, which is linked in the video description, by the way. It's the first link. So the names of the people who have submitted uh, their pictures and possibly the photographer's names are in the name of the file right here. I will not be calling out everyone because otherwise I will be listing names for the entire duration of this video. So thanks to everyone who has submitted their pictures for the purposes of demonstration and learning. Now before we will get into why and how and what and how to do all of this and so on and so forth, I would like to thank all of my Patreon supporters. Even in these difficult times of the Corona crisis, no one, and I mean no one, has cancelled their patron support for me. And for that I'm really thankful, it makes a very big difference for me. In fact, I even gained a few patron supporters. So thank you guys so much for your continued support. I'm sorry about uh, the delay on this video, I had to deal with some shit. Now I can get back to making these videos for you. So, repurposing. Let's get to my smart list right here. So the first I want to talk about is the archaic meaning of repurposing. So we, we will be touching on some philosophical themes and then we will also be getting back around to how to practically do this stuff as well. As usual I want to cover the entire spectrum starting from why it works on the most primal level up to like what kind of item do I use. Like the the question everyone is asking, so how do I do this? Like what do I order online to do this? Right? Okay, so let's start from afar, the archaic meaning of repurposing and why it works not just for post-apocalyptic stuff, but also for um, fantasy or any other genre or just in the real world. So if we start at the very beginning of the human history, humans are some of those animals, uh, this trait is not exclusive to humans, but humans are some of those animals who use their surroundings a lot. We do this a lot more than other animals. Uh, the one animal or other might use stones as a help to crack its prey's shell or whatever else, but humans have taken it to extremes. It's basically one of the defining human characteristics that we will take whatever is around and create something that we can use from it. For example, here we have a spear. So the most original spear was done by a caveman, God knows how far back in human history. It was made with the use of two things, a branch from a tree which was just lying around, not caring whether or not humans exist, it was not made for humans, it was not ordered online by anyone, it was just there, and there was a sharp stone, so the caveman took the stone, chopped off the branch or whatever, sharpened it, and basically bent uh, or found a way to use those items to um, create something that he can use to create a weapon which helped fight against lions and all that. So repurposing as at its core is nothing else that a primal human uh, thing, a primal human instinct, a thing that we do, a thing that uh, defines us as a civilization, as a species. That is one of the reasons why it is so powerful. So in the post-apocalyptic genre we are faced with a situation where the world has come to an end and in this world that has come to an end there might be a severe shortage or a complete lack of new resources. So if you want to make an armor you make do with what you have found. For example Conrad right here from Time Vehicle has found this 5 liter canister and repurposed it to use as a shoulder armor. Now this is a very specific kind of repurposing called a visible repurposing uh, and a context shift. I will talk about that later in the video. But for now 
let's just appreciate the fact that a lot of stuff, if not almost all stuff you do in the post-apocalyptic uh, crafting and world creation, will include some up to very severe amounts of repurposing. Now, uh, this is made the more important by the fact that we're specifically dealing with worlds that have been destroyed, where there is an abundance of old stuff, which, however, might be useless by now, and from that old stuff you can make some new stuff that is useful to you. So repurposing is literally a shift of purpose. <laughs> As the name says, who would have thought that? But you take something that is useless for you right now, and you make it into something useful to you. Now, uses can be different, they can be cosmetic or they can be practical, and I will talk about that in more detail as well later down the line. But for now, let's just appreciate the essence of repurposing and the specific of the repurposing in post-apocalyptic setting where, where there is abundance of old stuff like this uh, sink um, garbage blocker which prevents uh, you know the remains of the food and all clogging up your sink. You don't have a sink anymore, however, or, or no running water, so you reuse it as something to protect your eyes. Makes sense, right? So that stuff is happening a lot in the post-apocalypse. Now, this is why it's important in the post-apocalyptic setting, because we literally have a world with a bunch of resources lying around there waiting for us to be repurposed. So as opposed to a primitive setting where we have something like, where is the frog picture? Where we have something like an animal that we have hunted and repurposed its skin to be our hood now, in the post-apocalyptic world, we will have that, but we will also have, like, tons of um, baby stroller belts laying around here, like Andrew Foreman did here on this costume, and other stuff that was created by civilization, just for a different purpose, okay? So, the type of repurposing we're dealing with in the post-apocalyptic setting a lot of times involves repurposing other items made by civilization, as opposed to repurposing stuff that is made by nature. That is one of the fundamental differences from uh, primitive repurposing, as in cavemen making a spear and a hide to wear, as opposed to post-apocalyptic repurposing, where stuff is repurposed for armor or even decoration, or uh, even status symbols like the bad snake, or again, just practical purposes, like this fan made from PVC pipe or whatever it is. So, let's get to uh, close repurposing versus far repurposing. And that is defined by how far from the target, uh, how far the target of the repurposing is from the original thing that the thing was doing. Now, to name an example of a close repurposing, where the purpose of the thing is not shifted all that much, uh, here we have some examples of close repurposing. For example, those belts, or belts right here. Uh, like, people know, or some people that know about this stuff, specialists in quotation marks, and I will get to the specialist visibility of repurposing later, but people who know a little bit, so are in quotation marks specialists, know that this kind of belt or this kind of buckle is uh, was used for a harness, like for a harness that you wear on your chest, or to support your belt right? It was not used on the thighs. So technically it is a repurposing because we have taken some belt stuff and reused it for a different purpose, but it still serves as a belt. So it's a rather close repurposing. As for this carabiner right here, I would go as far and say it's not repurposing at all. Because, like, yeah, it might have been used for something else, but who says you can't wear a carabiner like this, like, in our normal world? Like, this is literally what it's made for. So, no repurposing going on here whatsoever, right? So, that is uh, uh, close repurposing. The original use is close to the new use. Now, let's get into an example of a far repurposing. A far repurposing would be something, for example, like... Yeah, let's say like this, again, like this, uh, this is a computer part, right? And usually it sits inside of a computer, not being worn on anyone's chest. But here it is used as a costume element, as an element of your wearable item. And that is done here for two reasons, one is armor and the other is uh, status. 
So that is also actually a um, point on my list. Practical use versus decorative use or both simultaneously. So here we have both uses at the same time. And I'm gonna just talk a bit about this point right now because that's pretty much all there is to it. Uh, items can be repurposed to be used either as a practical item or as a decorative item. Uh, now, in the context, in the meta context of post-apocalyptic crafting with us as crafters and artists uh, designing a composition, you could say it's almost always to some sort of uh, a degree decorative. However, if we stay within the framework of the world we are creating, uh, there is still a difference between something like this, that by the artist in our world is designed to look pretty, but in the world that it represents has just a practical purpose, like, you know, those are repurposed knives, you know? Uh, in the world that uh, they are in, they're not supposed to be pretty, they just maybe happen to be. So that is a practical purpose, regardless of its aesthetic value. So the character who made this or whatever in that world did not pursue the goal of making it look pretty. They pursued the goal of making them practical. Uh, however, here you can see well, it is decorated and all that. It's shiny. So the person wearing this or the purpose, the person who built this in the world, so not me, but the my character or whatever, as they would say on LARP, was pursuing the goal of both protecting their chest as well as wearing a status symbol. Uh, as opposed to this, which is just a status symbol right here. Uh, also with a bit of repurposing going on. Okay, that star was a military insignia to begin with. So it's close repurposing, a military insignia repurposed to be a insignia of whatever military or paramilitary or non-military other organization or personal um, character strength this might represent. And this around the star is a bearing. So it used to be practical, now it used for decorative purposes. So uh, this is a bit of a context shift, which is a separate point on my list, which is a very powerful point. Uh, so context shift is something that happens when, um, well, th this is a good example here uh, with uh, Conrad and his um, and his canister on the shoulder, which is a great example. The canister used to be used as a canister, but now it is used as an armor. Just that fact already tells us a story of a world where they have too many canisters, not enough water or gasoline, uh, or just too many canisters at that particular spot where that character dwells or whatever, and they used it as an armor now. That already tells us a story that is an active context shift, which is a very strong variation of a visible repurposing. I will get to visible, invis invisible and specialist visibility soon, but context shift is something where you immediately see an item from the old world and its new world meaning and the contrast between those uh, tells you something. A context shift can also be observed in something like this, where I'm wearing this gas mask as a crotch mask, simply by moving it from my face to my crotch. This tells the viewer that in this world, this character doesn't really care about protecting his airways or whatever. What he cares about is magnifying his crotch status symbol or whatever. Uh, by wearing this as a decoration. So it's uh, at the same time, again, a practical item, a gas mask, went decorative. This is also a repurposing. So repurposing does not always equal uh, that it has a new practical purpose. The new purpose can be decorative. So you can repurpose a decorative item to be a new decorative item. You can repurpose a practical item to be a decorative item or you can reuse a decorative item to be a practical item. So basically it goes each direction you can imagine, right? So here we have my uh, old uh, saw blade axe. This is a classic. So this is where a saw blade is repurposed to be an axe head, which by the way, doesn't work all that great in practical terms, but whatever. It is repurposed to be uh, cool looking at the same time with this flag and all. So it's a uh, like a ritual weapon or whatever. You can see it here. So it is like a combination of everything. You just take things out of their context. And the strongest version of that is, again, the context shift. Uh, so let's talk a bit more about visible versus invisible repurposing. Uh, 
it is not a binary condition. The repurposing you're going to be making or seeing is not going to be like a vi completely visible or completely invisible. And what I mean by visible or invisible is um, when you look at it, can you tell what's going on? Can you tell what has happened, what has been repurposed? For example, here, uh, it is a good example of um, invisible repurposing. And uh, it's by Steve Poirier, probably a French name, mispronouncing it, and he found it in a parking lot, all bent and stuff, and made a piece of armor out of it. <laughs> so <laughs> that's pretty much the core of post-apocalyptic repurposing right there. Um, you just find something, but there is no context shift going on here, right? We don't know what it is, we don't care what it is, it was just a piece of metal and now it's another piece of metal worn on your body serving as an armor. Now, this is a good example of invisible repurposing unless you are a specialist then you have the specialist visibility maybe you work with metal parts like this every day because that's a part of your job like maybe it's a car part and you're a mechanic and you know what it is in that case you have specialist visibility or it has specialist visibility to you you are a specialist so it's visible to you uh, here is another example now you don't have and when I say specialist I don't mean like super duper expert But in this case if we're talking guns if you show this gun to someone who doesn't do guns or no guns at all uh, Like to a grandma or whatever unless she fought in the world war She will be like I don't yeah, it looks like a world war gun like whatever may, maybe German maybe American I don't know but if you do guns and no guns you will know that this is uh improvised from multiple parts and this is done by Robert uh, Harbin by the way he does uh, a lot of guns so being a gun specialist including like real guns that also fire which these don't these are just props I believe um, so being a specialist in the uh, realm of guns he uh, repurposed multiple old parts from guns with some non-gun parts to create these props that look like guns and only if you have some specialist knowledge can you tell, right? Here is another good example of specialist uh, visibility of repurposing, uh, a clutch backpack. People who work with cars know that this is a clutch. Back when I implemented it, I didn't know what it is. I was like, this looks cool. I'm gonna put this on my back. And to me, it looked like something that might be from a spaceship, might be just some high-tech item, might be a filter intake for the rebreather backpack system that I had in the story for my character back in here, right? Uh, that was my explanation of it. Later on, I discovered from people who work with cars that it is a clutch, which, however, didn't kill the immersion for them, because then it was like, oh, like for people who know what it is, it was like, oh, cool, this guy is wearing like a clutch on his bag that's totally Mad Max car wasteland style, whatever. And for people who didn't know what it is, it's just still a cool looking part. Right, uh, Richard Flanagan took it uh, a notch up into sci-fi cyber direction here. This is an amazing build. It just makes me wet. It is awesome. It it's just wow. <laughs> anyway, but here he took this clutch, and as such, it loses uh, its appeal for people who know that it is a clutch to some extent. I mean. You can, st even if you know cars, you can still filter away your knowledge and, you know, suspension of disbelief, all that. You can still appreciate it as a cool sci-fi build. And specialists will a lot of times uh, see what those parts are, but on the metal layer of being a crafter or artist or knower of art themselves will still appreciate it. So even now that I know that it's a clutch, I'm like, yeah, that's a great use of a clutch and all that. Uh, and... If I try to ignore that fact that I know what it is, yeah, it does look like a really awesome space cyber backpack thing. So that is a specialist visibility for you. Now let's uh, we talked already about visible repurposing uh, a lot with this example of Conrad. That is visible repurposing of this canister. Or I also did a canister build here. There it is. Uh, and this is a context shift at the same time. So you see it used to be a canister now It's flipped on its head and there are faucets attached to it a taps attached to it And now you can get water out of it now. It's a context uh, shift and it's also a um, I don't know what it's called, but <laughs> on the one hand it's um, It used to be something that is supposed to contain gasoline, you know flammable and all that but now you flipped it literally on its head and use it in the post-apocalyptic world 
to drink water out of it. So it's like you're guzzling gasoline. It's like... Um, it's pretty much a, something that would be a wordplay in literature, you know? And this is the equivalent of this here. So there is a lot of context shift going on in this work, for example. Now let's talk about uh, uh, more about invisible repurposing. For example, uh, here on the back I have some um, detail, some electronics detail. You can tell it's electronics. But you don't know what it is, like it's a hard drive with some cassette player stuff, I think. Uh, but in this case, in case of invisible repurposing, you're harvesting the stuff that you're harvesting just for its properties and its aesthetic value uh, without... Uh, by its properties, I mean its secondary properties, right? The way it looks. In, on the metal layer of you building a costume. Or the way that it protects you, like Kleiner Zorn has here the Red Rodge gear, uh, and photos by Christian Andersen, by the way. Uh, so here he uses floor mats as his armor on the samurai build, right? So you don't know it's floor mats, you don't care if it's floor mats, but uh, it looks the part, and it does provide some protection, so he harvested it for the primary physical purposes of this material. Uh, he doesn't let uh, anyone see or doesn't care about letting anyone see on purpose that hey this used to be floor mats same way I care about showing here that this used to be a canister here I'm, here I'm very deliberately showing it used to be a canister here here uh, Vince Greets uh, Vince Geertz sorry uh, very deliberately shows that this used to be a license plate. Now, the license plate armor is an old times classic and post apocalyptic. As I said, remove this corner before you poke yourself in the biceps, otherwise, so far, so good, man. Uh, I think this is a bike tire here. So, using car parts as armor, it's like old time classic and post apocalypse. You want people to see that usually. It creates for a cool effect, which tells the story of the world, all that, blah, blah, blah. Here, Red Roach doesn't care. Whether or not you know it's floor mats or not, at least his character doesn't care about it, so to say. It's just there, it does the job, it has been repurposed, but it's not an in-your-face repurposing. So visible repurposing is in-your-face, invisible repurposing is just harvesting it for the aesthetic or physical properties. In this build I also have a lot of um, repurposing going on, like those boxes that those decorative plates and all are mounted on, and those hoses and all that, it's all harvested uh, old stuff. But I don't care to show someone that these muscle fibers here, for example, those synthetic muscle fibers used to be this and that type of electric or in this case pneumatic hose, but you don't know and you don't care what it used to be. In fact, if you knew, it would ruin the immersion. So sometimes you want your repurposing to be visible, sometimes you want it to be as invisible as possible to maintain the illusion. Uh, now, let's see if I have more stuff here. Well, I went through mm, all of my points. So now let's just go through the pictures one by one and I will talk about everything that I see briefly because we have a bunch of examples. Uh, sorry if I didn't include anyone's example or talk about it a lot. It's just a lot of examples. I am really thankful about how many of those are uh, so that I have a really wide selection. Anyway, uh, just gonna be going random. So this here from uh, Rex F. Beard, a hockey stick with a knife attached to it forming a spear. Yes, legit, what I talked about, existing stuff lying around, you don't do hockey no more, but you do hunting of radioactive lizards, so you attach a knife to it to make your stick longer with a knife on it. Perfect caveman logic, and caveman logic is what a lot of times drives post-apocalyptic repurposing too, uh, and what makes for a lot of good designs too. Uh, here is something from Vilko. And Vilko has done a perfect example of invisible repurposing here. I can't name a single item here. I think it might be that one airsoft mask that everyone uses as a base, but a good use of it now, but maybe it's not. I can't name a single item here. So perfect example of invisible repurposing. Uh, he just used whatever he found to form this entirely new piece. I talked about this one already. If you know guns, you will be like, this is awesome. If you don't know guns, you will be like, also, this is awesome, but might have been from the Second World War, you know. Uh, yeah, in invisible repurposing at its finest. I, I think it actually might be some, like, this, the part of the card that protects one of the bottom parts from the floor, and someone lost it. Uh, this is a Geiger counter repurposing, repurposed from an old voltimeter by Peter Roberts. Uh, this is cool. 
I mean, it, it is kind of an uh, it is a good example of invisible repurposing, where the old part is no longer it doesn't matter. You the, did it used to be a voltmeter or not? It just made a perfect base for it. But he's not trying to tell you the story of used to be a voltmeter now is. So if you imagine visible and invisible repurposing as a sentence, it would be blah 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 used to be and now is. If you can see that, then it's visible repurposing. So we talked about this, we talked about this. Um, by the way, here, check out how I'm, I'm combining completely uh, brand new um, purpose-made parts that have been cut specifically for this with repurposed items. That is what I do for a lot of high-tech builds, because for high-tech, you can't have everything repurposed. It's called gag, by the way, in the professional movie industry, when you uh, gag together parts from other parts. So repurposed builds are called gag. And if you combine GAC with a lot of brand new purpose cut parts, you get something higher tech. If you have just a high tech purpose built parts, you have something like a space armor that is pristine, that has little repurposing in it, or at least little visible repurposing. Those chains and stuff and spark plugs and bike tires and all that, it's all um, <laughs> repurposing, yes. Um, it is status symbol and also some... Um, protective gear repurposing going on here so i'm using those uh it used to be useful and uh, like for car ignition those are spark plugs if you didn't know for some reason <laughs> and i'm using them as armor now because you know no cars and stuff so that again tells a story uh here we have yeah talked about this one already and also notice how cavemen like literal cavemen repurposing of this uh, animal part stuff prop is combined with uh, repurposing of a skating pad, skating knee pad, because, you know, I'm not skating, I don't want to protect my knee right now, I want to protect my shoulder by combining old world tech, old world stuff with something primal. Here is something from Mateusz, Mateusz, Lauda. Yeah, just read the name. <laughs> Basically, uh, they are making this stuff right here. It's made from shoes. Uh, kind of visible if you know it. But again, a great example. And now this is from Lynn Fernandez. And Lynn has made this from a, uh, from a bunch of bike tires. Like this entire <laughs> corset or this entire, I don't know what it's called, the skirt thing here. From bike tires. And this is from a flag. So that is uh, a perfect example of repurposing which goes from old world practical to new world fancy. Because this piece of cloth in the new world means absolutely nothing in practical terms. It's all, you know, showing off. Which is why the chosen form is a historical one, which was also designed to show off back then. Uh, Luciano Maverick. And this, yeah, <laughs> I mean, what should I say? All of those weapons and stuff makes perfect sense. The metal is there, you just cut it, you realign it the way you want for a weapon. This is based on a historical weapon, by the way, at least so I've heard, despite looking totally fantasy. So this this is a great example. Again, from Luciano right here, and this is kind of invisible repurposing going on here. Like, the shurikens are held in place by neodym magnets, which he scavenged from a hard drive. So that is a good example of that. Uh, here is something by Liam Richards, uh, a plumber's carabine. Like, yeah, people would be building... I mean, people are building stuff like this just not for Nerf or as a prop, but people are building stuff like this for real in the real world in, uh, like, poorer countries and or even in prison or I don't know. So this is perfectly realistic uh, looking. This one is not a real gun, by the way. It's going to be, as far as I know, it's going to be Nerf. Uh, another one from Time Vehicle. And here it's a pure aesthetic repurposing of those bike parts as angry moth <laughs> eyebrows. So decorative value derived from old world uh, function. And here is uh, kind of semi-visible in slash invisible repurposing this seat buckle used as a buckle on here obviously you would not use a buckle like this in normal world but since the apocalypse happened you know that's why a mix of uh, old uh, of sorry visible and invisible talked about this plenty also mind the chains here those are pretty cool too and, and the bike uh, 
This is one of the reasons why this succeeds so much. It, it's the same principle I said before uh, with my other armor, when I said purpose cut parts, like these on the chest. So the material here might be repurposed too, by the way. You just don't know it, nor do you care. This looks like purpose cut parts for the armor, while this looks like also purpose cut to be your armor, but it, the old purpose is still visible. Here is something from John, and uh, it's actually a tool he uses for crafting. It used to be a file, he sharpened it down to be an awl with a botkin point. I did that with my screwdriver, perfectly nice. Something from uh, John, I, I don't know how to pronounce your names, people, but uh, I, I know who you are. Uh, from Johnny Pepin. And yeah, those knives, shown them already. Looks pretty, but looks like it was not supposed to look pretty in that world, still does in ours. Looks very practical for the new world. Uh, just lacks some sharpening, you know, I, I would add some sharpened stuff here. Uh, n not as much as to hurt you in the real world, of course, when you carry it around. Uh, Jan Wolfhagen, a classic baseball grenade. Yeah, I think this concept appeared in Fallout and in a bunch of other places. Like, what should I say about it? <laughs> it's a great example. Uh, because you throw baseballs, you also throw grenades, so the fact that this um, peace times throwable item has been turned into a war times throwable item in this story tells you something about the world it is happening in. And it's also funny at the same time, like, I'm gonna throw my baseball at you and then... <laughs> Everyone explodes. Uh, Jan Tar uh, repurposed his sink into what looks like a perfectly nice uh, Ray Punk armor. So, um, like, yeah, uh, he wrote, like, needs more distressing and blah and so on. I agree for most post-apocalyptic genres, but as it is right now, it looks like from Star Wars or something. I, I don't know. It, it looks like Ray Punk stuff. I like it already. Uh, here is an axe, a two-handed axe from a saw blade with an animal skull and those spikes on the other hand. Like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, what should I say? Except, yeah. This is something from Gorglip Buffle. And I criticized this front part already, which looks like garden stuff, while the rest looks super high-tech. But otherwise, it's a great work. And it's been repurposed, as you can see here, from a bike um, break or something, so this, at the same time, doesn't look that, that much, like, you know, he's not really trying to tell you, this is a bike break, but it just looks like it fulfills the purpose, purpose perfectly, you know, uh, the dynamics of this weapon aside, because this would be a horrible trigger, actually, but in the world, in the, you know, the rule of cool world that is going on here, this served the purpose perfectly, so I'm hesitant to call it visible repurposing. Like, yeah, you can say it's a bike break if you look at it long enough, but at the same time, if it wasn't, it would be looking exactly like this. So here, the fantasy stuff, yeah, the frogs, the stick. I mean, I took this just as an example of um, repurposing outside of post-apocalyptic stuff. Now, this is interesting. This is a completely invisible but very realistic repurposing by Elizabeth Kumaki right here, who does this thread twisting from actual like junk plastic or whatever material stuff you could could find in a wasteland so this is 100% realistic I bet they're doing it in some really distressed third world countries right now so this this is very legit here's something from David and it's a fan with a scavenged motor and blades made from um, PVC pipe or something else I, I don't recall what it was but the fact is, you don't know what it was, but you can see it's kind of uh, jury rigged and it's nice. It's nice. This one is made from shoes by Dan Oblak, and you can tell it's made from shoes on a second or third glance, but that makes it then the more cool. <laughs> one of my favorite simple, stylish pieces of all times, really. Christian Ristov with the stethoscope, which wouldn't work, I believe, because that's not how speakers work unless you have electronics behind it sitting in the cable, which I don't think there is, um, and doesn't look like there is, but, you know, with some suspense of disbelief, sure. Uh, shown you the bad snake already with everything else that is going on here, a lot of repurposing because it's a more tribal style. Um, and the more tribal something is in the post-apocalypse, the more repurposing you're usually gonna have. Not always, but a lot of times. Yeah, shown you the eye protectors already from Brandon. 
Whatever the Hell is Going On Here <laughs> by Bradley McManus, also with some classic tires as armor. Yeah, this is a lot of uh, repurposing going on. I think it's built from junk almost completely, so yeah. Uh, some uh, gators for those forks so they don't catch dust, made from uh, US mail bags. Yeah, repurposing as at its finest. <laughs> Doesn't even have to be post-apocalyptic. You can do something like this in your everyday life, which I encourage people to do a lot if if you can do it safely and nicely. Um, Billy Joyner. I'm not sure what is even repurposed here or not, except maybe the vacuum cleaner hose that I could recognize if I wanted to, but that is a good example of invisible repurposing, which where a bunch of parts create just a new nice-looking uh, aesthetic but you don't know what any of it used to be, really. You, I don't know what kind of helmet it was, and so on. Talked about this one already. Yeah, this one by Andrew Foreman, as well as this one, you can see how much repurposed stuff is going on here for a really more futuristic kind of post-Apple look. <laughs> this is really interesting. I think those are, are like thermos bottles for tea and stuff to keep it warm. And... A lot of it, if not all of it, is just household items and recycled baby strollers. This on the side, I think it's from Ski Boots. But the point is, this is nice. This is a re very interesting, colorful post apple style I didn't see a lot so far. Ellison Fluster repurposed those headphones as base for something. Used to be some modern fancy-ass headphones. Uh, and then they broke, or I don't know what happened exactly, or she just didn't, didn't use them anymore, and here we go, a headdress. Something that would happen in the post-apocalypse for sure, whether or not those headphones still work in the story. Talked about this one already, and here we have an example from Adam Dronborg, and this is some radio stuff going on. I don't remember what it was, but it was not purpose-built radio boxes, but now they are, I, and I can tell so much, I can see so much. Um, it was for something else, some other kind of audio equipment, which makes sense, you know, it tells an additional story. You use some old audio equipment, uh, in which you, in quotation marks, change the electronics to use it now for your combat radio and improvise from whatever you have. Uh, so here we have it, folks. Uh, I hope this video was useful to you and also some level of entertaining. And I will see you in the next episode. Uh, again, thanks so much to my Patreon supporters. If you're not supporting me yet but are a regular viewer, consider supporting. And thank you so much for sticking with me in these times. And also join the Nuclear Snail Community Group. Links to Patreon and to uh, Nuclear Snail Community Group are in the video description. I will see you next time. Bye.